What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Fireside Giants. I'm your host, Anthony Rivardo, joined by my co-host, Alex Wilson. And the New York Giants have finally hired their defensive coordinator. It felt like this search took forever. I mean, they went through a pretty long list of options and candidates for the position. Not the most exciting list of candidates. And as we know, their top two candidates, Denard Wilson and Bobby Babbage, both went elsewhere so the Giants were kind of left scrambling over the weekend to finally hire their defensive coordinator and they did so with former Tennessee Titans defensive coordinator Shane Bowen. He will be coming over here to New York to fill the same position that he had with the Tennessee Titans. He was their defensive coordinator from 2021 to 2023 and through those three seasons had some pretty good numbers, had a really good run defense, was really praised for his ability to coach and to teach and there was a lot of reports about how great of a job he did developing pass rushers so there's definitely some positives to the Shane Bowen hiring even though he is technically third choice for the New York Giants not a bad hiring by any means however it does kind of feel like they settled as my initial reaction and furthermore I do have questions about how much of the success over in Tennessee on the defensive side of the ball belonged to Shane Bowen and how much of it belonged to Mike Frabel, their head coach, who was a very defensive mind, um, minded coach and had a lot of control over that defense. We're going to kind of go ahead and pick into that and discuss how we feel about this hiring and kind of some of the pros and cons to it. But before we dive into all that, make sure to leave a like if you do enjoy this episode, subscribe to the channel if you are new, ring the bell so you don't miss an episode and comment your thoughts on the topic down below in the comment section. If you listen to Apple or Spotify, please make sure to leave us a five-star review. Go ahead and follow us on all of our social media channels at Fireside Giants. But without further ado, Alex, how are you doing today, my friend? And what is your initial reaction to the New York Giants hiring Shane Bowen as our next defensive coordinator? Well, I'm doing pretty well. And, you know, definitely we saw it coming. We knew Joe Shane said he wanted to have something done by the end of the week. Obviously, it took a little bit longer. But listen, I think that we had to settle for the best option available because we lost that on Denard Wilson. We lost that on a couple really good options. Um, guys that were coming from, you know, elite level teams and you know the Tennessee Titans just shredded their whole coaching staff and we end up with Shane Bowen who if there's anything to like about Shane Bowen it's it well it's two things one the Tennessee Titans have had an elite run defense for the last couple years since he's been there and two he learned under Mike Vrabel and Mike Vrabel as we know is a very good defensive coach so I do believe that there are some optimistic silver linings we can take from this is it my first choice do I love it no it's not my first choice and I don't love it I'm content because it, in the spot that we were in, we didn't have many options. We didn't have many other choices. So we had to go with the guy that had the most uh, potential, had the most experience, as Anthony kind of said. Um, and I do believe that at this point in time, you know, we have to hope to God, right, that he maximizes some of our young talent. We have to hope to God that Kayvon Thibodeau reaches his potential and Deontay Banks continue his development. Um, that's a big That's a big talking point for me. Like, that's a huge kind of focal point for what Shane Bowen needs to accomplish is maximizing the youth and the talent on this team that we have that hasn't reached his potential. Kayvon Thibodeau had double-digit sacks last year but was really inconsistent. We need him to be a superstar. You know what I mean? That's what we need. Like, he needs to be the guy we drafted him to be. Um, you know, that's why you're bringing Carmen Bacillo on the offensive line. You need him to develop Evan Neal to the player that we hoped he could be. Like, this is what some of these coaches need to do. Be more collaborative. Be more developmental. Uh, focus on getting these young guys and maximizing their upside. Um, he is really good with linebackers. Bobby Okereke, I don't think, should skip a beat. I think Bobby Okereke is going to be in a really good spot because this uh, this defense is so young. Um, now, consider this. Kayvon Thibodeau, he only knows one offense, one defensive scheme since being drafted, Wink Martindale's. Um, you know, guys like Bobby Okereke now have to switch another to another defensive scheme one year after coming here. Um, so it's, it's, it's tough. It's going to be a little bit of an adjustment period. But I think that we have better cornerbacks than the Tennessee Titans did. I think they had a couple injuries at the position. So we, we should have a decent uh, roster in terms of our defensive quality and talent, especially if we keep Xavier McKinney, where this defense could be good. You know, I think we'll have a good run defense. I don't know about our pass defense. I think we have the talent to be good, but we need another CB. And we also have uh, to resign McKinney because otherwise we have to draft somebody or find a supplement. And, the, and it's not looking very hot in free agency this year in terms of alternatives. You could go for Winfield Jr., but I think he's probably going to extend it by the Buccaneers. So, you know, what are you thinking right now in terms of Shane Bowen, what you expect from him? What's your, uh, what's your upside and what's your downside? Because there's definitely a little bit of both in my opinion. 
Yeah, I mean, I want to address what you said about Kayvon Thibodeau. Obviously, we're in agreement and everybody else is in agreement. Maximizing his talent and developing him into the superstar he's meant to be is of the utmost importance. But here's one thing, one reservation that I have with Shane Bowen. If you take a look at his defense, Harold Landry was his best edge rusher. Harold Landry is a really good pass rusher, um, plays on the line, plays off the line. You know, he's a really good player. And he had 16 sacks in 2021, according to Pro Football Focus, with 70 total pressures. So tell me why in 2023, that guy dropped back into coverage 84 times. Not so sure. Uh, and I know that's a 89 times, actually. And that's a major complaint from Tennessee Titans fans that they had about Shane Bowen. They said they, they that Bowen dropped their best pass rusher into coverage far too often. And rounding up the complaints from Giants fans on Wink Martindale this offseason, the number one complaint was Kayvon Thibodeau was dropping back into coverage way too often. So that immediately does give me a reservation towards this hiring and does make me a little bit apprehensive. Again, who knows how much of that was Shane Bowen? Who knows how much of that was uh, Mike Vrabel? And also, who knows how much of that was Harold Landry is maybe just pretty good in coverage. That's possible. But Kayvon Thibodeau is not very good in coverage, so I don't want to see him dropping back into coverage 80 times again this season. I think that that number should fall down to 40-ish at the most. I mean, that's where your best edge rushers lie. Uh, if you're playing that 4-3 defensive front, I mean, your edge rushers are probably dropping back into coverage 10 or less times per season. But under Shane Bowen, it's going to be a hybrid, a very multiple defensive front. If you take a look at his film and um, some of the kind of different clips uh, of that defense, it's a lot of 4-3 and 3-4. But the base is more of a nickel. It's more of a nickel defense. So one of the main takeaways for this Giants uh, defense um, after this hiring is that they need to add more talent to the secondary. So there's another pro and con, depending on how you look at it. This should be a defensive system that maximizes the talents of a Deontay Banks, of a Xavier McKinney, but that's, you know, expecting Xavier McKinney to return. Maybe he doesn't. And then if he doesn't, that need to add talent to the secondary becomes even greater because this is such a nickel-heavy defense. So you're talking about five defensive backs typically on the field rather than four. Uh, you're talking about maybe six defensive backs in those dime packages that are going to be run more frequently. So... The Giants need to add more cornerbacks, whether that be through free agency. It could become a main priority in the draft now, uh, something that they uh, kind of acknowledge within the first two rounds, maybe three rounds, could be cornerback now, uh, where we were kind of thinking in the over the past few weeks, Alex, that maybe the Giants would prioritize addressing quarterback and then receiver and then probably offensive line or maybe edge rusher. Well, now it's probably more likely that instead of edge rusher slash offensive line, it's going to be cornerback because they're going to be running a nickel heavy defense with a lot of moving parts. So this is going to be a tough learning curve, I think, for Giants players because it isn't just that 3-4 uh, attacking, aggressive style of defense that Wink Martindale was running. This is much more of a hybrid defense that plays a lot of nickel and drops back into zone coverage and doesn't blitz a whole lot. So it really relies on your pass rushers to be productive. So Kayvon Thibodeau needs to succeed this season in order for the defense to succeed. Aziz Ojolari needs to stay healthy and needs to succeed this season in order for this defense to succeed. Uh, Dexter Lawrence, no, no worries there, but he needs to continue to play at an elite level in order for this defense to play at a moderate level because it is so reliant on the front four pass rushers getting the job done and doing the work on this defense. So you're not going to see a bunch of safety blitzes with Xavier McKinney this season, I don't think. You're just going to see a lot of drop back into quarters coverage, into cover two. That's It's a lot of cover two slash cover four for Shane Bowen's defense. So you're going to see them drop back. It's a very casual, soft zone coverages. And hopefully those front four pass rushers get home. If they don't, Giants might get picked apart, but there is a lot to be said about how great of a run defense Shane Bowen had with the Tennessee Titans, so while I kind of mentioned some of the cons to this, I'm going to mention some of the pros. He's always had a great run defense, like top three in the NFL year in and year out. He also has always had a great red zone defense, top three year in and year out. So those are two huge areas of weakness from the New York Giants 2023 defense under Wink Martindale. They really struggled to stop the run, and they really struggled in the red zone at times. This upcoming season, expect that to be opposite. They should be a lot better against the run, and they should be really good in the red zone, hopefully getting some clutch goal line stands, because that is what Shane Bowen's defense has become accustomed to in recent seasons. So there are some cons here. Again, I'm a little worried about Kayvon Thibodeau and how well he's going to develop 
in this multiple defense that's going to be asking him to drop back into coverage a lot. That's a major concern for me. However, I also think that Deontay Banks can thrive in a cover four heavy defense that allows him to just shut down an entire sideline. They can be great at that. And I also am excited by the fact that linebackers perform well in this system. So Bobby Okereke, Micah McFadden, going to be really good against the run this year and hopefully going to continue to develop and play at such a high level like they did last season. So there's pros and cons to this hiring. This isn't one of those hirings that just makes me immediately thrilled and super happy. Again, feels like the Giants are settling and feels like a a little bit of a risky move. And when you think back, Alex, to when Wink Martindale left this team, we were like, okay, this isn't the worst thing in the world if the Giants go ahead and get themselves a really good defensive coordinator to replace him. But I'm kind of like... I don't know how much of an upgrade this really is. I think you could argue this is a downgrade from Wink Martindale if you want to. You could argue that this is a risky hiring after Wink Martindale. Maybe you could argue that it is an upgrade, and it's kind of up to each you know each fan's opinions and how they feel this defense should be ran and how they feel about Bowen's time in Tennessee. But just overall looking at it, some of these things that I mentioned here definitely make me nervous about what this defense is going to look like this season. I mean, I'm really struggling to get past the fact that Harold Land injury a year removed from 16 total sacks dropped back at the coverage 89 times last season I mean I'm just thinking if Kayvon Thibodeau is in the same defensive system would he have dropped back 89 times he dropped back 84 times under Wink Martindale and we all thought that number was way too high I don't want that number to increase I want that to decrease significantly so I'm really hoping that uh, Shane Bowen uses more of a of a pass rushing tactic here with Kayvon Thibodeau and doesn't drop him back into coverage and make him subvert a uh, versatile piece just have him rush the passer that's what he's best at he's not good at the other stuff so just get let him get after the quarterback um but it is a multiple defense they're going to be in the 3-4 they're going to be in the 4-3 but a lot of nickel so adding talent to the secondary bringing in new cornerbacks it's going to be a top priority for the Giants but Alex kind of back to the point that I made where you know Wink Martindale left the season and we were thinking okay it's fine as long as we upgrade or we find someone on the same level do you think that happened or do you feel like this might be a downgrade from where we were with Wink Martindale I mean, look, the Giants defense did not rank very well last year. We had a couple really good games. I think the one thing that covered up what would have been probably a pretty bad defense watching it live was the turnovers. We created a substantial amount of turnovers last year. I know we went the first couple of games without turning over the ball once um, or getting a turnover, and then it just started like it was two, three, four, you know, every game. And we were like, okay, like that's kind of sustainable for us. If, If you can sustain that, you can cover up a lot of weaknesses. The Giants lived and died by the turnovers this past season. If you eliminate, if you cut those turnovers turnovers in half, this team, this defense was pretty bad. You know what I mean? But because we had Bobby Okereke punching the ball out, McKinney making some nice plays, a couple interceptions here and there, it covered up a lot of the weaknesses. We we really struggled to stop the run. Um, we struggled in pass protection because we had a lot of inexperience. Dory Jackson missed time. They put him in the slot. He got torn apart the first two weeks of the season. Um, I think we tried to you know skirt around a couple things, and the, ultimately the turnovers propped us up a lot and gave us a lot. Give us the ball. Give the ball to the offense, and the offense was not good enough to capitalize. So, you know, I think that there was a lot of things that kind of went into this team being kind of bad. But moving forward. I think that if there's anything that's going to happen, as you referenced, you know, I think the run defense will improve, and I think that the red zone defense will improve. But I will say one thing, and I and I, and I think Wink Barndale actually said this when we hired him two years ago. If you can make a, a, an opposing offense one-dimensional, it makes it a lot easier to stop. If you can have a very, very good run defense, it makes an opposing offense one-dimensional because you stop the run, now you know – probability that they're going to pass is much higher so now we can prepare for that we can predict that if you can predict what they're going to do you can defend it a lot easier so I think theoretically speaking you know you have Andre Patterson one of our best assistant coaches he worked wonders you may you made Dexter Lawrence even better somehow you know we saw some really good upside from Jordan Riley Ashawn Robinson was solid Rakeem Nunez Roche was solid I think that we had some really we didn't really skip a beat when Leonard Williams left and I think that's exactly a, a testament to Andre Patterson's quality um, as an assistant coach, as a position coach. So what I want to see is Andre Patterson take more of a hold with some of the edge rushers. You know, I know we had the Wilkins bros as the outside linebackers coach, but why isn't Andre Patterson working alongside, like working with Kayvon Thibodeau and Aziz Ojolari? You know what I mean? Maybe he is, maybe he wasn't. I think I saw Nick Filato or, or somebody on their podcast said that Andre Patterson wasn't working with Kayvon Thibodeau. 
yeah, like that makes total fucking sense. Don't have your best assistant coach who helps some of your best interior defensive linemen in, in, in terms of helping them procure a pass rush and build on their pass rush moves. Let's not let that guy coach your, one of your highest upside defensive players, right, on your defensive freaking line. I'm sorry to get pissed off and angry about it, but it pisses me off that we don't have some of our best coaches working with some of our best talents. You know, tell me how malpractice that looks like. So, you know, I, I feel as though right now the Giants need to get Andre Patterson more involved with some of their top pass rushers. I know he's more of an interior defensive line guy. But guys, you want to know who he helped develop? Two guys that come to mind, Everson Griffin and Daniel Hunter. Daniel Hunter is one of the best pass rushers in football. He's coming off a straight-up elite season with the Minnesota Vikings. Why is it that Andre Patterson is not helping and working with Kayvon Thibodeau? You know, riddle me that. So that's something that has to change. It must change. They need to get their strongest coaches, their strongest developmental coaches, in with one of the, some of their best developmental players, and that is Kayvon Thibodeau, and I don't think Aziz Ojolari is even close to seeing his potential. So I'd love to get them more involved with Andre, um, and I think that ultimately whoever Shane Bowen brings in to support that outside linebacker group, it needs to be a coach that's going to be collaborative. It has to be a, a team effort. It can't be the Wilkins bros doing their own thing or whatever the hell's going on. Um, it needs to be more of a, a, an effort that is team oriented, more communication. You know, everyone needs to be involved, and I think that the Giants are heading in that direction, which is what Brian Dable like actually wants. Um, clearly, Shane Bowen is coming from a defense that had tons of collaboration in terms of uh, Mike Vrabel being a big part of it. So they had to collaborate, they had to work together, and I think that ultimately we will see uh, maybe more benefits from that communication and working alongside the assistant coaches and you know bringing everybody together and hopefully um, you know helping guys like Kayvon reach their potential. But you know, what are your thoughts on that? We know Andre Patterson's past. We know how good he's been with those guys in the past. Interior guys and outside linebackers are just pass rushers in general. Um, do you think he needs to be more involved? Yeah, to a couple points you made there, I'll start with that one. I mean, with Andre Patterson, he didn't work with Kayvon Thibodeau because Kayvon Thibodeau wasn't listed as a defensive lineman. He was listed as an outside linebacker uh, on the New York Giants roster, and only defensive linemen are what Andre Patterson was coaching. Outside linebackers were coached by the Wilkins brothers, as you mentioned. Uh, I don't like that setup. I don't think that's the best setup possible. I think that there should be more collaboration, as you mentioned. And I know that there will be under Shane Bowen because Shane Bowen, first of all, is expected to retain any of the New York Giants current assistant coaches. They're expected to stay. Now he'll bring in some other guys like an outside linebackers coach because the Wilkins brothers are gone. Um, there's probably other positions and assistants that he wants to bring on to his staff from his time in Tennessee, and he will. But Jerome Henderson, Andre Patterson, some of these other guys that were here with the New York Giants in the past are staying. That it was reported uh, alongside the hiring of Shane Bowen. So you could expect Andre Patterson to continue to coach these defensive linemen. But now, because it's a multiple front defense, you're going to be playing 3-4 and 4-3. Yes, Kayvon Thibodeau will be working with defensive linemen in 2024. So he will be working with Andre Patterson and receiving some coaching from him. So there's a couple things to take note of there. I mean, listen, Thibodeau is going to be an outside linebacker and a defensive lineman this season. He's going to be doing both of those things. Sometimes you will finally see him with his hand in the dirt out of a three-point stance, which we haven't seen from him so far. We've only seen him on a two-point stance playing as an outside linebacker. That's going to change this year. He will be getting his hand in the dirt, and that means that uh, he will be coached by Andre Patterson at times. But the other thing that you mentioned, Alex, that I do want to touch on is takeaways. The New York Giants were one of the best turnover-creating defenses in the NFL this past season under Wink Martindale. Well, if that was one of the things that you really loved about the New York Giants last year, don't expect to love that about the New York Giants defense this upcoming year because in 2023 under Shane Bowen, the Tennessee Titans ranked um, 31st in the NFL in takeaways and dead last in interceptions forced. So not a whole lot of takeaways created by Shane Bowen's defense this past season. Now the seasons prior, it was ranked 14th in 2021, 20th in 2022, and again, 31st in 2023. So this has never really been a great defense at creating takeaways. But one of the things that you did mention that I liked, Alex, was you talked about how he's going to aim to make teams one-dimensional. And that shows up in these stats here. So if you're looking at his defensive stats uh, for rushing, they the rushing defense ranked second in the NFL 
in 2021, and it ranked first in the NFL in 2022, but it ranked 32nd in pass defense in 2022. Uh, but it also received the most passing attempts against any defense in 2022. So again, making a team one-dimensional. So yes, there was a lot of passing yardage and a lot of passing attempts, but that's because the run game was non-existent for teams going up against Shane Bowen defenses. So that's a really good point that you make that I wanted to touch on is that Shane Bowen is very good at making teams one-dimensional. So this upcoming season, you're probably going to see some quarterbacks perform with 500-yard passing games against the New York Giants defense, but they might still lose because there was no running game and they were probably playing from behind that's what you've seen a lot in these Tennessee Titans defenses under Shane Bowen the run defense is just completely shut down it's gone and now it's about um, the pass defense kind of just bending but not breaking and hopefully holding down in the red zone so one of the things that the Giants defense is going to need to make sure that it focuses in on this upcoming season, you have to prevent big plays. The Giants can't let up explosive plays this upcoming season. They're going to have to play that bend and don't break defense and hold in the red zone and hold opponents rushing attacks. That's going to be a big challenge for this Giants defense because last season, their rushing attack was very poor. So do they even have the personnel to have such a good run defense like Shane Bowen is hopefully going to institute? I'm not so sure. They're going to have to add talent to their defensive line and add a lot of depth in that regard. They probably need more depth at inside linebacker. Yes, they have two really solid starters. Bobby O'Karake is phenomenal. Micah McFadden is turning into a really good player, but they need more depth behind those two players. And they need more outside linebackers slash edge rushers who can play in a 4-3 defense because it is a multiple front and who can play in run defense more as pa more than they can as pass rushers. There's going to be a lot of personnel changes for the New York Giants defense this season. That's what I'm starting to learn the more I dive into Shane Bowen's defense. They need to add more talent in the secondary. They need to add linebackers who can play in coverage and defend the run now. And they need defensive linemen who can help bolster the interior run defense. There's going to be a lot of holes on this Giants defense entering this offseason now. If you thought there was holes on the Giants offense... Now there's a lot of holes on the Giants defense because this is a pretty significant change of scheme uh, and really change of approach here from the defensive side of the ball because this isn't that fast-paced, aggressive, blitz-heavy defense where your blitzing is masking a lot of your depth problems. This is very much we need to have a lot of talent at all three levels of this defense in order to succeed. So it's going to be tough for the New York Giants to make this adjustment, and they're going to have to get really creative in free agency. So again, overall, I do like this hiring. I think Shane Bowen is a good coach, and he's coached some really good defenses, some really good run defenses in particular. But the New York Giants have a lot of work to do this offseason and not a lot of money to get that work done. They have $14 million in projected salary cap space, um, or effective salary cap space, rather, taking into account the rookie draft class uh, and having to get to 51 total active players on the roster. So there's not a lot of money for the Giants to spend, and it's likely going to go to a couple of top players like a Xavier McKinney and maybe a Saquon Barkley. But really, overall, this might have to this might cause the New York Giants to reprioritize certain things going into free agency. I, I think that it's possible Saquon Barkley is no longer prioritized as a must resign player because now they do need to re-sign Xavier McKinney, like almost desperately because of this defensive scheme that they're going to be running. And they need to add more talent around Xavier McKinney rather than adding back Saquon Barkley and talent around him. So this might change some things for the Giants' plans this offseason going into free agency and the draft, and it's definitely going to change some things for the Giants in the regular season. This defense is going to look a lot different. Again, you're going to see a much more multiple front. You're going to see a lot of nickel coverages um, or nickel uh, personnel packages and zone coverage, a lot of zone coverage rather than man coverage, which I think is a welcome change. However, this is just a much different defense. It's a bend, don't break, like take away your passing game or take away your running game and make you a passing team. But against some of these top offenses in the NFL, they win because they have great passing attacks. So it's a little bit of a give and take here. It's kind of tough. I'm not exactly sure that I, I see the vision fully with the Shane Bone defense, but maybe the more I learn and the, the further that we go in terms of adding talent to this roster in offseason, maybe I'll get fully behind it by the time that the regular season rolls around. But overall, I am a little bit underwhelmed by this hiring. I don't think it was the best option for the New York Giants. However, it's probably the best option that they had after losing out on their top guys. So it's going to be a tough change for the Giants defense. And again, they're going to have to do a lot of work in the offseason to add talent to this team. But overall, I'm a little bit mixed on this hiring. Alex, what are your final overall thoughts on this? How are you feeling about the hiring? Did you learn anything new in this, discuss in this discussion about Shane Bowen that maybe gave you a little bit of apprehension? Or do you feel confident that he's going to step in and do a pretty good job from day one? 
Um, I guess the only thing I can say is this. He is the guy with the most experience, right? We went with the guy that had the most experience, has a couple seasons of play calling under his belt, has a couple seasons of developing defensive game plans, and I think that's the safe option, right? The Giants, of course, you will uh, – and look, Denard Wilson was my guy. I wanted him. He has no experience as a defensive coordinator, but – Sometimes those young, those new guys, they step in. They have, they're coming from a really good scheme, really good defense. They know what they're doing, and they are quick risers. We see it all the time. You know, we see those coaches that get coordinator jobs and leverage it right into head coaching positions. I mean, Brian Dable did it um, over a couple of years, and obviously, you've seen like guys like Kellen Moore now um, didn't get a head coaching job, but he obviously leverages that um, now. Uh, Where's he with the Eagles? So you see, like guys do it. It happens. Um, going with the safe option, guy with experience, play calling experience, like Shane Bowen. Um, Middle of the pack defense, some elite traits, stopping the run, red zone defense, good stuff there. I think the Giants will have a better secondary than Tennessee, most likely, because uh, their de- their secondary was pretty poor. So maybe they can they can silence some of those big passing games from from opposing quarterbacks. But we'll see what happens. I think that ultimately, it, look, if you look at the numbers from our defense last year, they weren't very good, guys. Um, I, I don't know how much better or worse it's going to be. I hope we can make, sustain more turnovers or a similar amount of turnovers because that really propped our, our team up entirely at times. Um, but with that being said, it's a see, it's a, it's a wait and see type of situation. Um, I have like I'm not upset and I'm not happy. I'm like kind of okay. Like it was a safe option. That's what we went with. Hopefully it pans out. Hopefully you know they can put together a good team. But like you said. It kind of makes the importance of bringing back Xavier McKinney, a leader on this defense, and a big piece of the secondary imperative. So, with that being said, I think the prob- from this hiring, the probability of us bringing back McKinney increases pretty significantly. So, um, I do believe that they're probably going to let Saquon walk in free agency or tag and trade him, and they are going to uh, bring back McKinney on a nice long term deal. So, we'll see what that looks like. He's definitely going to want top dollar. Um, but maybe they tag McKinney and piss him off. We'll see what happens. Uh, but I do think that right now I'm feeling like kind of dead even on this hire. It's fine. It is what it is. It's not a home run hire, but it's the safe option. Yeah, I feel the same way. It's it's the safe option. He's got experience calling defenses. He's got plenty of experience leading a good defense alongside Mike Vrabel with the Tennessee Titans. Like Shane Bowen's a good coach, no doubt. Uh, I'm just underwhelmed because this isn't necessarily the hiring that I wanted to see, and maybe that's just my fault. I got my expectations high, but I don't know. We'll see how it all pans out. Like you said, Xavier McKinney is going to become a high-priority re-signing here, and it might take priority over Saquon Barkley now because of this um, hiring of Shane Bowen, and it's just going to be an interesting offseason for the New York Giants. I mean, it's already been pretty interesting. Uh, you had Wink Martindale cursing out Brian Dable and storming off. You had rumors about Wink Martindale um, – or about Brian Dable cursing out Mike Kafka and the whole offensive staff. That's another point that we didn't even touch on, Alex. I mean, uh, Mike Kafka is returning to the New York Giants, but seemingly against his will. Uh, He was going to interview with the Seattle Seahawks as their offensive coordinator uh, for that position. The Giants blocked that, and Jordan Rannon came out and said that 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 was because there's a perception around the league that the Giants are going to be stripping away Kafka's play-calling duties. So he's getting demoted, but they won't let him go get promoted elsewhere. Uh, That's not really the best look for Brian Dable again, but maybe we talk about that in tomorrow's episode. But we know that Mike Kafka is going to be back. Um, Now we have Shane Bowen as a defensive coordinator. And again, the Giants are going to have to do a lot of work on the roster construction side of things this offseason. It's going to be interesting. And of course, we're going to continue to update you on everything about the New York Giants coaching staff, player personnel additions, everything else in between right here on Fireside Giants. So make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this episode. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Ring the bell so you don't miss an episode. Comment your thoughts on the topics down below in the comment section. If you listen to Apple or Spotify, please make sure to leave us a five-star review. Go ahead and follow us on all of our social media channels at Fireside Giants. Without further ado, we'll catch you all in the next one. Have a good one, and let's go Giants. Giants.